Hello, everyone, and welcome to the additional material that we introduced in class for chapter three of our course. Chapter three, as you know, involves activists as claim makers and the idea of social movements. As a reminder, social movements are overarching large scale causes, which may contain smaller, more narrowly focused groups known as social movement organizations that many times often provoke counter movements. The material expansion that we introduced in chapter three deals with one area where we have a variety of activists engaging in social movement organizations in response to various identified social problems. So what is the area that many of these social movements organization focus on? They focus on things related to the criminal justice system. Now, why is there such a focus on the criminal justice system? There's a large number of reasons, but one of the reasons why the criminal justice system has been such an area of focus for um, social problems activists and social movement organizations is because the criminal justice system in many ways can be thought of one of the most racializing social structures in regards to inequalities. I'm skipping ahead one slide to give you a quick definition of what racializing means in regards to social structures. Whenever we say racialized social structures, what we're saying is the totality of all social relationships within a system and practices that in effect reinforce racial inequality, specifically reinforcing the advantage of the racial group that has structural power compared to other racial groups. In the United States, this is individuals who traditionally fall into the definition of white. This does not mean that all white people are unlimited in power. It's not what this means. Again, Whenever we're talking about social structures, social systems, and social science research, we're talking about general patterns that apply to the general set of people in a society. It's not completely deterministic. Research like this is probabilistic. It is saying that the average white person compared to the average black person in the United States, all else being equal, will have a greater degree of power will have a greater degree of various valued resources. So, that in mind, racialized social structures involve the totality of all social relationships and practices within a system that in effect, regardless of intent, in effect, reinforce white advantage. The idea, still stemming from our week one and week two material is that once an inequality is introduced into a system that inequality cannot be rectified without constant committed effort and resources towards addressing it otherwise existing power imbalances will continue to ensure a reification of those power imbalances so why is the criminal justice system specifically thought of as one of the most racializing of social structures, those social structures that tend to reify existing inequalities in regards to racial groups in the United States. There are a number of social structures and many social structures are racialized. Why are social movement organizations so keenly focused on criminal justice system elements? There are a number of reasons. One, the criminal justice system is designed by its nature to focus on protecting the existing social order. It's about ensuring, ideally, right, in an ideal world, the criminal justice system is about ensuring stability. There are a set group of codified laws. The goal of the criminal justice system is to ensure the stability of these laws by interpreting and enforcing them. So laws are created, the social justice system is in theory created to protect the existing social order. Now let's think back to what I just said and what we learned just from week one. Our original, the social order that we all have been born into, we're not going back to Adam, right? We're talking about the existing social order that anyone in our modern society has been born into. There are already existing inequalities. That is something that is empirically proven. Why these inequalities arose is a study of history and historical sociology, but it is empirical fact that these inequalities existed in the society that we were all born into and that our grandparents and great grandparents were born into. Now, if these inequalities exist and if inequalities tend to perpetuate themselves 
in the absence of a constant application of effort and resources over time to undermine these inequalities, the operation of the existing social order does not help to rectify inequalities. Social order is not focused with rectifying inequalities to create equity like we talked about previously. It is focused on guaranteeing equality under law. That is to say, the law is supposed to treat everyone equal. However, because not everyone is equal in terms of the resources they have access to in practice, the law reifies this existing set of inequalities because it does not and cannot take into account the fact that people have different structural positions that are shaped outside of just their individual actions. Now, why else is the criminal justice system considered to be so racialized? It's because, two, it exists within a Republican Federalist government, which allows social structures to be politicized. A, fe a Republican Federalist government, a Democratic government in many ways, will end up without, again, that constant effort and application of resources over time, will reify existing inequalities because those who have more power are able to engage in more actions within the system. They're able to use their resources to have their voices heard more forcefully and to have their thoughts transitioned into actual action. Remember, the idea of resources is that you use resources to make your will manifest in the real world. And this is especially important whenever there are wills opposed to you. In that case, the will that is backed by more resources, by more power, will tend to be enacted in the actual world, will tend to be manifested in opposition to opposing wills. So because the criminal justice system is designed and shaped by this system, by a federal, uh, Republican Federalist system, which itself is politicized through the use of different access to resources, that inequality and that conflict between groups of who have different access to resources will become baked into the laws that that government creates and the systems that government creates to enforce those laws. Finally, the criminal justice system is considered one of the most racializing social structures because it operates as a gateway for various assets. Your interaction with the criminal justice system as a manifestation of the will of the federal government, because that is what it in effect is, it is the will of the government to have certain actions be promoted and others to be forbidden made manifest by enforcing that upon you through policing, through sentencing, through prisons, through these various mechanisms that are used to ensure compliance with the will expressed by the government. Interacting with this system can cause you to lose access to various assets. This is true, you know, regardless of your racial group. Interacting and being sanctioned by the criminal justice system will impact your ability to access resources. However, existing inequalities will shape this, both by shaping who comes into contact with the criminal justice system, the result of coming in, the result of coming into contact with the criminal justice system in terms of the degree of effect, and then finally your ability to respond to the effect of having interacted with the criminal justice system. What this means is that whenever you interact with the criminal justice system and you have less resources than someone else structurally, you're more likely to be harmed by interaction with that system. And that harm will in turn make it harder for you to acquire resources, thereby reifying existing levels of structural inequality. And so this is why the criminal justice system is so intensely focused on by social movement organizations as a racializing set of social structures is because of the degree to which it reifies inequalities largely through how it shapes your ability to access and acquire resources. With those that already have resources being more able to avoid sanction or being able to better weather sanction than those who are less structurally advantaged. So let's continue on with a couple examples of how 
criminal justice systems are racialized, how they reify existing racial inequality. There are three examples I provide here. Criminalization, sorting, economic policy. In terms of criminalization, we have an evolving set of rules known as zero tolerance. You have a higher rate of people being sanctioned because certain actions are considered not to be nuanced. If you bring a weapon to school, you will be expelled. There is no room for interpretation there. However, the rate at which people are searched for weapons, searched for things that would violate a zero tolerance doctrine, differs based upon structural inequality. Those with more resources are less likely to be searched and are more able to use their power to make it to where searches are less likely to occur. If you are in a wealthy school district, and a police officer wants to search you, a child, your parents who have more resources are going to fight back against the school district. The school district recognizing this is going to be less likely to search you. Compare this to a school district with a large number of black students where the school district may not perceive the same risk of having a strong actor push back against them due to installing things like metal detectors and randomly searching students. And so what we have here is a system that introduces people into the criminal justice system, a zero tolerance system, but that zero tolerance system does not end up being applied equally in terms of how intensely people are monitored. We also have things not just in terms of interaction with the criminal justice system, but we also have things known as sorting. So these are more macro systems to where people are sorted into communities, often by existing structural inequalities. Those systems that you are sorted into are then going to shape your likelihood of contact with various um, social systems that have been racialized. So the example of um, sorting being a racializing social system, communities tend to um, be defensive, especially whenever it comes to schools. So it's hard to move into a rich neighborhood in part because it would lower property values. And so rich neighborhoods are motivated to not just let anyone in. This results in a sort of system to where communities now become homogenized in terms of the access people have to resources. This is true in the economic realm, but this is also true in regards to racial groups in the United States because of the structural relationship between resources and economic status and racial groups. We also find that within schools, we have tracking and sorting systems to where those with more resources, those with more structural power tend to be put into training tracks, which would lead them to more academic pursuits. Those who have fewer resources are put into lower tracks, which for various reasons, increase the probability of having a negative outcome. I have a third one listed here, economic policy, but because we actually didn't talk about that in class, I will not be introducing it here. Even though economic policy is listed on this slide, it is not something that may appear on your examination. So let's continue on with this idea that racializing socials, that many elements, many structural elements of the criminal justice system are racialized. What do we use as indicators of this racialization. I'm making this claim that these systems are racialized. What do we use as indications of this racialization of this trend of social structures to reify existing patterns of inequalities? We can tell this by looking at patterns within the criminal justice system, with the argument being that if there are structural differences in treatments and outcomes, of groups of individuals. That is not something that we accept as just innate to human nature. That is, an, that is an explanation that we cannot accept as social scientists because it is fundamentally a philosophical argument. You can't quantify it. You can't study it qualitatively. It's just a philosophical position, which is unacceptable. So as social scientists, whenever we see patterns and outcomes, this means that there are likely patterns in larger systems that are resulting in these patterns and outcomes because if these pattern systems did not exist then there should be no resulting pattern in behavior and outcomes so what are the patterns in social justice systems 
that we can use as indicators of the fact that these systems have been racialized. I have a couple of examples provided here. One, we see in the criminal justice system that there are conviction and sentencing that is harsher or greater for black defendants compared to white defendants, all else being equal. What do I mean when I say all else being equal? All else being equal means there's a mathematical way to where you can control in quantitative studies for the effect some variable has on an outcome, even after accounting for other variables. So for example, if I wanted to see if race was significantly related to the conviction rate, right? I want to see if being white or black has a statistical relationship with your likelihood of being convicted. In order to determine whether it is a racial statistical relationship with conviction rate and not something like economic class or gender, we would control for this. So I would first enter in gender into my model statistically, and then I would enter in my uh, information representing class statistics. Once I have entered all this into my model, you know, seeing whether gender has an effect, seeing whether class has an effect, after entering all that in, if we still find that race has a significant effect or a significant relationship with the outcome variable, then we can say that race has an effect after statistically holding all other key variables to be equal. This means that if you have a white man, middle class uh, of high school education, and you have a black man, middle class of high school education on the convicted on the same drug, uh, arrested for the same drug related offense in the exact same conditions, we are still statistically more likely to find black men being convicted compared to white men. This is an empirical set of findings. So if we have controlled for these other key axes of stratification within society and contextual factors, and we still find a racial difference in outcome, we can logically conclude that that outcome is in part due to a racialized set of structures within the criminal justice system. Now that's conviction rates and harsher sentences. We've also found in criminal justice research a greater potential for black individuals to be stopped by police, even though white individuals reported greater drug use. This was an interesting set of studies to where the New York police um, were pulling over cars on a highway in New York, and then sociologists would talk to the people who had been pulled over. And what they found was that black drivers were more likely to be stopped even though of the people, even though on the highway of the random people that the sociologists then talked to, the white drivers were more likely to be in violation of something, were more likely to have drugs in their car than the black individuals driving on that highway. And yet black individuals were more likely to be stopped by police statistically than white individuals. This may be a direct result of overt racism, of people just not, of cops having a problem with black people. Or it might be a more structural element, such as this is what cops are told to think about in terms of something being dangerous. What matters for us talking about a racialized system is that in effect, the structure of the system results in unequal treatments in outcomes, which reifies existing inequality. And then finally, we can tell that the criminal justice system is racialized because of the impact coming into contact with the criminal justice system has on the distribution of resources, where we find that it has a larger effect on a black individual's ability to acquire useful resources compared to white individuals. This does not mean that white individuals are immune from being harmed by the criminal justice system. This is probabilistic, not deterministic. This is saying that this is the general pattern that we find, not that it perfectly holds true for every individual. Our science is not trying to explain what is true for every individual. We are trying to explain general social patterns. And so these are some simplified ways of how we identify the some ways in which 
the criminal justice system operates as a set of racializing social structures. So let's go ahead and cover one final set of slides that were introduced in class, and then we will go ahead and round things out today. So I'd like you to go ahead and consider the four following people. We have Austin, Brennan, Charles, and Dwayne, A, B, C, D. Legally, these individuals would appear, like I show you at the bottom of the screen, legally the law is not allowed to take into account any of their characteristics. They are just individuals under law. However, that is not how the system actually affects them because the people who design and operate the criminal justice system are not constitutional automata. They are not robots. They are humans who have been socialized within a system, and so it is not possible for them to see everyone as this blank slate. Or rather, it is very difficult for them to without constant internal reflection and awareness of their own position within a social structure. So in practice, Austin, Brennan, Charles, and Dwayne look like these individuals, young white man, older white man, business white man, black business white, uh, black businessman. So why does this matter in terms of a criminal justice system? Because it matters because differences in perception of these groups due to socialized norms and also differences in terms of structural enforcement result in different outcomes. So let or result in different probabilities, excuse me, of outcomes. So let's consider the following. Both Austin and Dwayne leave the house to go to work after smoking a little bit of pot. As a black individual, Dwayne is more likely to encounter some sort of interaction with the criminal justice system and go to court compared to Austin, who is less likely to encounter that system and would just be able to go about his day. Now let's consider that Brennan and Dwayne both had been you know, arrested because they had smoked pot before leaving the house. They came into contact with the criminal justice system. They were arrested and arranged on drug charges. Because of structural constraints within the criminal justice system, and because of differences in power that these individuals bring. And remember, these are not true individuals. These are representations of the average person statistically within these groups. Brennan statistically is more likely to leave the criminal justice system without taking a plea that results in him being a felon compared to Dwayne, who statistically is more likely to accept a plea deal which involves him becoming a drug felon or ex or you know that and that plea deal may still involve some jail time and then even after that let's consider charles and Dwayne. both were um using drugs left the house got arrested had a conviction of some kind once they were released from prison or on parole because of their differences in structural location and because of differences in how the criminal justice system operates in terms of the people who operate within it and their socialized understanding of meanings and um, expectations for behavior, Charles is less likely to have further negative contact with police compared to Dwayne, who is more statistically likely to have a recurrent negative interaction with police. It is through these statistical differences in outcomes and interactions with the criminal justice system, all else being equal, that results in the reification of racial inequality. So we'll be talking a little bit more about race um, and race as an axis of social stratification in the next chapter, but I wanted to make sure that everyone who was not present in class at least had access to some of these slides because at least some of this material is eligible to be included on your examinations. If you have any questions about the material we covered, if you have any points that you would like to discuss with me, please re reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you everyone for your time and I will talk to you later.